Good morning, and welcome to St. Mary's Parish. We come today to celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. We are happy to be here with you this morning and would like to welcome all visitors and new parishioners. Our celebrant today is Father Neil, who is assisted by Deacon Dave. If you would please take a moment to silence all your electronic devices and cell phones. This week's readings are as number 925. The hymn numbers are located on the boards to the right and left of the altar. Our opening hymn is found in the Journey Song Hymnal, number 450, Hail the Festival Day, number 450. Just as a reminder, the rosary will be prayed after Mass, and this Mass is being live streamed on the Parish YouTube channel. Please stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in preparation for these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in rewarded youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you the author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sin may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Sure. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. 
Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, they asked him, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish, and he took it and ate it in front of them, and said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. In today's gospel, we meet the risen Christ. And this has been a theme for the last few weeks. We've heard the women going to the tomb and not knowing who Jesus was at first. And then we also hear of the road to Emmaus and them not knowing until the breaking of the bread. And then we see again today in the gospel, the disciples were startled. They did not believe what they, could, they saw. They were terrified, thinking that it was a ghost. And in all these images that we see of Christ after his resurrection, is that the Lord has changed. He does not live as he previously lived. His existence seems to be not understood by the disciples. And yet he has a body and the physical one at that, which is key. It encompasses the whole of his life that he lived, the destiny he passed through in his passion, death, and resurrection. And that is why the gospel is telling us to look at Christ again today. The gospel, it says, look at his hands, look at his feet, that you may truly know that he is Christ. Touch and see and know that I am flesh. He may have t changed, but he is still bone and flesh. As the resurrection, as we see in the gospel, did not erase these signs of the crucified Christ. He showed the apostles his hands and his feet. And to convince them, we hear that he even asked for something to eat, and they gave him a baked fish. St. Gregory the Great, Pope, wrote something, a little theological reflection on this fish, which I find really interesting, is that this fish was caught, just like Christ was caught. It was baked and it was eaten. Christ suffered and died for us, and then he asks us to consume him in the Eucharist. There's a very Eucharistic gospel today, and it's also calling us to have faith to believe in that Eucharist. It was by means of these very realistic signs that the disciples overcame their initial doubt and opened themselves to that gift of faith. And this faith enabled them to understand what the written Christ was telling them in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. They came to realize. Indeed, we read, Jesus Christ opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that Christ should suffer 
and on the third day rise from the dead, and the, that the repentance of sins should be preached to all the ends of the earth. You are the witnesses of all these things. Our Savior ensures us of this real presence among us through the Word and through the Eucharist, our source and our summit. Therefore, just like the disciples to Emmaus, recognizing Jesus in the breaking of the bread, we too encounter the Lord and the Eucharistic celebration in that breaking of the bread, that realization and that deepening of our faith. Our eyes are truly open. There's a regard, a theological thought also by St. Thomas Aquinas, and it might sound like gibberish, but I'll say it anyways and translate. It is absolutely necessary to confess according to the Catholic faith the entire Christ in this sacrament of the Eucharist, since the God had never set aside the assumed body. And that is why we proclaim that the Eucharist is body, blood, soul, and divinity. That is why the disciples thought they were seeing a ghost and they were in shock. Who is this man who has a body but is God? Has these wounds but is God? Has this soul? That is what we profess in the Eucharist every day when we come to Mass or on the weekends when we come to Mass. And I also find this very appropriate, this Gospel, especially since this weekend we had children receive their First Communion, and some of them even receiving for the first time today at Mass. And then those others that received yesterday for a second time today. Christ came to the disciples to give them faith to go out into the world and to tell all the nations of this beautiful gift of Christ. God gave us the grace to believe. He gave us the grace to understand the Eucharist, this Paschal mystery that is so profound. I want to say that you too, which you are, are witnesses and are going to witness all these Eucharistic things that we hear in the Gospel today in this Mass. And I therefore urge you all to realize that this feast of faith today with great fervor to understand it more deeply and open yourselves to that grace that God has given us. For this day continues to be the memorial of that day that we hear in the gospel, that they came to understand the importance of this person this encounter with Christ which we encounter today. Let us stand and profess our faith. One God. Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus, things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Son of God, God born, born of the Father before all ages, ages. God from God, God light, light from light, light true, true God from true God, God begotten, begotten not, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. 
He ascended, he ascended into, into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our Heavenly Father's mercy, let us bring our prayers before him. We pray for our holy church, for the clergy and lay ministers. May the Lord guide them in caring for the spiritual and physical needs of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those countries in conflict throughout the world, South Sudan, Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, that the Holy Spirit may lift them up, give the people the fortitude and perseverance to defend and the finite dignity and the sanctity of all human life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who struggle in their faith, that they may strengthen by the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the parishioners of our parish, especially those that have just made their first communion. May the Holy Spirit continue to illuminate their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our beloved sick and those that are nearing death. May the Holy Spirit renew in them the hope of the resurrection, offering them strength and drawing them ever closer to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for our beloved dead, for all those holy souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them. We ask a special prayer for our parishioners, Mary Pemberton Stobe, Maria Elena Patino, Ronald and Ronald Clee, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Wayne Traffis, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, bring us closer to your Son in the Eucharist, that we may always proclaim to the nations that he is in it presently, body, blood, soul, and divinity. I ask this in all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn can be found in the Journey Songs book number 430. Two were bound for Emmaus, number 430.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceased to offer himself for us, but defended us, ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and all those who are holding to the truth and hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God, and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing their merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn can be found in the Spirit and Songbook number 246. Do this in memory of me. 246. Number 809 in the Journey Songs book, Behold the Lamb, number 809.
Continue singing Let Heaven Rejoice in the Journey Songs book number 435. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Just a brief announcement for next weekend. I will not be here, so if you're looking for confession, it will only be Father Ray, because I'll be at diaconate ordinations to up in Evansville. So just fair warning. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. For my Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God.
Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Praise to you, Lord our God, our eternal shepherd and guide. We know that all authority comes from you. With confidence in your providence, we entreat you to provide the Diocese of Knoxville a new shepherd after your own heart. In your love for us, send us a shepherd who will lead us in being Christ, heart of mercy, voice of hope, and hands of justice. Help them to fill our minds and hearts with the truth of the gospel, the power of the sacraments, and the desire to build up your holy church. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn can be found in the Spirit and Songbook number 177, Alleluia, Love is Alive. 